Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and I'm gonna show you in this video how to box out your roof eaves because we are building this casita and we are gonna start framing out these roof eaves so that we can get the roof sheeted. I'm gonna show you how I did it and I'm also gonna show you guys a method how I got them up by myself. So I just got done doing the front side of the garage which has a little bit about a 16 foot run and I'm gonna show you guys every step that I did and I repeated it over here on the north side facing of the house. Couple simple steps, a little bit of pre-planning. I'll show you the methods that I did. And I'm usually doing this all by myself. So I'm showing you guys how I got these up there secured solo. So one of the first things that we wanna do is actually find the angle that we're gonna be cutting the two different pieces for each side of the eave. This is where the two pieces will meet up and hopefully meet up nice and flush. But we gotta find that angle. So when we're trying to find this angle on how we're gonna cut this piece for the inside that we're gonna mirror both pieces of the eave, there's a couple different ways we can find it. First, we want to get a straight line vertical, which you can do by just hanging this like string or you can hang something that gravity will straighten it for you. You can also do a level and make some type of mark that we have our vertical line. Then we're going to mirror that up with an angle finder. That is something like this that we can then come out here, make sure it's zeroed out. We can set it along the eave and we can find our angle. So we're roughly 67 so i'll do this with two hands here and get a better angle so by using this i can see that we're basically at 70 degrees that is 110 one way or 70 degrees this way and then we'll mirror that to our miter saw and we can go ahead and make these cuts and we'll be able to get this thing to match up nicely we'll have two pieces inside and outside and we'll do the same thing over here but this is how i find that angle draw a plumb line use your string line you can use a level and then match that with some type of angle finder tighten it down and save that angle i found out that i have roughly a 70 degree angle so when i go and transfer that over to my saw that will either be 70 degrees one way or like 110 degrees the other way either way i just mark it on a piece of wood and then i mirror my blade to that because we don't know if our saws are always plumb so i like to mark it on a piece of wood so i know that that is the angle that i want then I'll run my saw blade across it to make sure, secure it down, and then repeat those cuts. And we're gonna do that four different times because I'm boxing out two sides of the eave. So there's four pieces, two for each side. So once we have all four of those pieces cut, we can start marking every two feet, mirrored on both pieces like I did here. Every two feet, we're gonna do our spacing. That matches our spacing in our rafters. So the eaves will be boxed out the same way. My blocking is gonna be about 10 inches and with the two two by fours, or I'm sorry, the two by sixes and the blocking being at 10 inches, that will give me basically a 13 inch overhang. We're gonna do per plans 12 to 13 inches overhang. So if you want it to be exactly 12 inches, you gotta factor in the width of your two by fours or your two by six faces or fascia and then the blocking in between. So you'd probably cut it at nine inches. Once I have my blocking in place, I like to use a clamp to help me kind of hold the pieces of wood together. You know that this wood from the big box stores is never straight and true. So I like to bring it along and tighten it together, then nail it. And I do that and I just kind of repeat that process down. I already have one of them put together and I'll show you guys here just the process of going one by one, lining them up on the marks, using the clamp, nailing it and get both pieces built. Once we have our two eaves framed and ready to go, this is where the solo technique kind of takes in. I, I like to do a lot of work by myself. I'm usually out here, so I have to be a little bit creative. So what I did is I took a piece of that two by six. I marked the line on both sides of my eave, up at the peak and down at the bottom. Down at the bottom, at the bottom of the roof eave, I'm gonna be putting a larger brace. I just built this kind of triangle framed brace that I can screw in. I'm going to screw it into the side of the house and I'm going to line the top of it up. The shelf is what it's going to be. I'm going to line that up with the line that I marked, which is that five and a half inch width of the two by six. And I'm going to do the same thing up at the peak of the roof, but that I just use as a cleat. It's just a piece of two by six. It's not a giant shelf. I need the bigger shelf at the bottom because I'm going to be setting part of this roof eave up there and then walking it up the ladder. And when I walk it up the ladder, it's going to be moving around a lot. So I, I need a lot of room for this thing to wiggle and not fall off on me. That's probably the most dangerous part is just doing it by yourself and that thing falling while you're holding onto it and remembering that you just gotta let go and that thing pulling you off the ladder. So you don't wanna do that. Um, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, get help, but I'm a little stubborn. I like to do things by myself. So I put that cleat up there. I put the shelf up there 
and then I'll get part of the, um, the bottom of the roof eave, not the part with the angle, the straight edge cut. I'll set it up there and then I'll carry up the center or that, that peak up the large ladder. I already have my nail gun in place. And then when I put it up there, I can hold it up with one hand on that cleat that keeps it right in line with my roof truss. I know because I have it marked right there at five and a half inches. I can slide it over to that center line that I marked because that's where we're gonna be putting both pieces to meet up to. And I just throw a couple quick tack nails in it. Once I have those tack nails in there, it's gonna pretty much stay where it's at. It's not gonna move, but it's not, it's not stable yet. So I need to go down over to the lower side, throw in a couple screws, hold it tight. And then when we do this on the other side, we're just gonna repeat that process and they're gonna meet nice in the middle. And then when I throw those tack nails in there and a couple screws at the end, we're gonna then go up into the roof and start clamping it and pulling it against those roof truss and actually throwing screws through those roof truss. That's gonna really start to make this thing very strong. It's gonna make it very stable and it's gonna be even more strong once we finally start putting roof sheathing on. And that right there is it. Let's go ahead and hop up the slider and take a look at how we did. It's not too hard. A lot of it's just planning, a little pre-planning, setting up those braces. You see, that's pretty good. We can pull these out now, and then we can go ahead and get on the inside of the roof, and we'll start clamping all this down and putting screws through it, big three and a half inch screws through all that wood right there. This is a view here from up top and the way we're gonna finish this off is by clamping everything, pulling this board really tight. We have the roof truss and they actually double these up because they know that they're gonna be nailed and they also need to be a little bit more structural. But they double these up so that we can nail everything in. We already have some of our screws coming through. So I've gone through and I do a staggered screw and I do one on either side of where these uh, bracings are. So one at the top, one underneath the bottom. So we got two here, two in the middle, two there, two in the middle. We'll clamp and do that all the way down just to make sure this is sandwiched together. We don't want any space here. Any gap that might be here will cause this thing to have a little bit of instability. This still may give a little bit, but once you have everything screwed in, you can push on it and you can tell that it's pretty much very, very stiff, but it really starts to get its structural integrity when you start putting actual roof sheathing on top. So when you start tying all these in, all these roof truss will give a little bit. Their strength doesn't come side to side, it's vertical. So when you start putting that paneling on, it starts tying everything in together side to side and it, and it shares the load. So this over here, if it were to pull down, it'd be pulling across multiple beams and it basically stabilizes everything. So don't worry if it is a little bit of flex to it, but I think you'll get most of the flex out once you start securing everything down and have it finished. But this thing will be super strong when you box it all in and put the roof sheathing on. And I'll show you guys right here. This is where our finish is. That's pretty, that's pretty plumb right there. I mean, that's, that's perfect. Lines right up here with my peak. Everything's very straight. And I got a little trick right here. This is just kind of what I do because this is rough framing. You're going to have a little bit of gaps. I take one of these synthetic shims. These are made for like door shims. And I have a little gap right here. I'll actually put this shim through like this and that way this kind of acts like a keystone if you guys know what a keystone is you'll see arches built and then you'll see like a triangle stone right in the middle of the top of the arch and and the pressure of the arch both sides pushing down push on the keystone it's the key and so when you slip that in there both sides are basically pushing in on it and this stabilizes it so now rather than just leaving this gap or trying to squeeze it together I can use this and the reason I like this synthetic one is because it's not going to deteriorate. I'll trim that off and this just kind of creates a very, very tight, secure joint. And then I can just throw a screw through there just to toenail it. But pretty much the pressure of the roof and everything will keep this pinched and it will always have contact. So we won't have any gap there either. So this is just a little something I do 
you know you don't have to do that but this does make it even that much stronger so when there's that flex it shares the load over to the other side as well so slip a little shim in there make up the difference trim it throw a nail through it finish down the other side and you're ready to roll and that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed the video that's just one of the methods that i use to kind of do some of these things myself um, we're going to get ready to frame out the rest of the eaves on the end here i'll make another video showing you the methods that i do to run a true plumb line we're going to be cutting all the ends of these and boxing it all in and then we're going to be throwing our roof sheathing on so that'll be in the next video if you guys have any questions let me know i like answering everything in the comments if you haven't already hit like and subscribe and if you haven't seen in some of my other videos I make shirts. I actually print them myself by hand. So if you want any shirts, I got a couple different designs. I got my email there in the description. Shoot me an email. We'll work it out. Real, real limited supply, a little exclusive. But if you guys want any gear, I make it for you guys. We'll mail it out. Thank you guys again for watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next build.